Hi guys, Katrina here, as promised. Um, we're going to be chatting about ancestry and um, kind of hints and tips and things to research your family tree. Hi, hi Aid. Um, so really, um, we're just going to hang in here a few minutes because there's usually a slight lag. So I'm going to wait um, just to see if everybody's online. We've got folks here on Instagram. We've got folks over on Facebook. So we're just waiting for you all to join in to find out what's inside my head. So there. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. And I made, I made a bit of an effort as well, I thought. I would kind of wear my best business gear. Um, there you go. <laughs> so let's just see where we are at. Hi guys, thanks for joining. Just to remind everybody, today we're talking about ancestry, um, a how to search your family history. Um, in a Scottish sense, um, and that's what my focus is on. Um, a little bit about me, I am um, Scottish trade, and I also do uh, ancestry and genealogy for folks um, in Scotland. So I'll explain to you what tools and things that um, you should be using, and little hints and tips that I can recommend just to get the ball rolling. Uh, one moment, that's right. We've just got a lady who's on our um, Facebook saying, where are you? <laughs> anyway, hi, Megan. So my sister's just joined. Hi, Claudio. Um, hi, Des, nice to see you here. Uh, let's see where we're going. And we're just going to get the start. Um, we're going to start sharing this out. So uh, let's get the ball rolling. So first of all, um, whenever I get asked to do any kind of ancestry, um, or research for people, you know, um, a lot of them use or have used um, the website like Ancestry before and other sites which um, they have used to try and research their family tree. And a lot of them have all sorts of weird and wonderful information that they have managed to um, acquire from that. Um, Although Ancestry is good because it's a good tool to actually use to put all your um, information in that you have now discovered. It's a really great um, overview of your family tree. Um, it is open, so some of the information that you have found, somebody else has found um, <clears throat> before you. So you don't really always know how good um, the research that they had done was. Um, which is quite uh, problematic because especially when you're looking at a British um, uh, ancestry uh, or name, especially at certain times in certain places, you would have very similar first names and last names. So that can make things really difficult. So somebody um, who doesn't always know the geography or who hasn't really done all the fact checking can get themselves into a bit of problems when it comes to, um, you know, just, oh, there's a John Smith, for example, they're my John Smith, but they might not actually be your John Smith at all. Um, so I think Taylor, if Taylor's here, Taylor, um, I hope you don't mind, um, it's one um, job I've just done recently and we kind of went with what had been told um, through the family history, through the uh, down the line. Um, and when I looked at it, because I have a sense of obviously Scottish geography and um, it was very unlikely um, the information that she had. And I had found the same name in a more likely place 
where her family were actually living at a certain time. So we went with that. So that's kind of what I mean. You have to be very careful with ancestry and just make sure that um, you kind of take it with a pinch of salt. Um, it's good for kind of hints and things. So sometimes you'll go, how on earth did that person get that name? Uh, where did they get that name? And I'll give you um, an example. Um, in my own family tree, so I've been doing a lot of my own research um, for my family, um, and there were some things that we had been told um, which didn't kind of add up the moment I went and started to look at it directly um, through the archives and through um, the records. Um, it just didn't add up. So I kind of debunked a few family myths um, that others from, say, um, distant relations that we have from like Canada, um, we've got a lot in America, in um, Oklahoma, for example, we've got a lot of family in Oklahoma. Um, somewhere, there was some lady actually, she's uh, an ancestry and she was from, I think it was Long Island. Probably. Anyway, she she had done quite a lot, but some of the things just weren't adding up. Like she had a death, like a um, a death date um, for not so far a distant relative um, in the kind of nineteen twenties uh, in Leith in Edinburgh, and she had that on her ancestry for ages. Um, and I went and looked at it, and I thought, why would why would an 80 year old woman go from Greenock on the West Coast to Leith on the East Coast by herself in her 80s? Like that just didn't make any sense to me. So I searched and searched and I, it wasn't her. Um, and through a lot of digging, I found her actually. Um, she died in England really randomly. <clears throat> it was very, very, very strange. Um, but I, I kind of debunked something um, and that's what I kind of spend my life doing actually. So if you're interested um, at all and if you guys have any questions, please ask me. I've been doing this for a while. Um, I go to all the archives as well directly. Um, I go to the record, uh, uh, the records in Edinburgh. Um, and also, obviously, I use the National Library because it's really good. Sometimes with this job, you actually have to look at the history of a place, what people were doing, um, and to see if you can find anything within any other sort of material, um, i.e. newspaper clippings or um, merchant records and stuff like that. So um, you'll see on our um, Facebook uh like notes, notification, announcement, if you like, um, about tonight. Um, it's actually pictures that I took in the Arbroath and the Angus, um, the Angus archives um, back in January. I went down there for another lady I'm doing some work for. Um, and I was like, you know, getting all the old records out and seeing what I could find. And you basically are like a super sleuth. You have to go and you know, go through anything you can find which references this name or this person and this address and so on. So it's, it's my favorite thing, guys. Actually, um, I'm in my element. I just want to say hi to some people who've just joined. We've got Stuart. Hi, Stuart. Nice to see you. Um, Taylor, you've just got home. It was Taylor I was mentioning before. We've got some folks here on Instagram. Um, actually, my sister, Megan, um, who's in here. I'm just going to do a wee shout out to Megan because um, I took Megan for uh, uh, Megan studied art um, and she has been I've been taking her about with me on certain jobs so she's doing some really great um, illustrations and things to do specifically for a family and um, so if you're interested just let me know um, I just want to say hi, guys. Um, hi, James. Uh, still tour Scotland. You can certainly do that. Um, still tour Scotland. Just give us a wee message. Um, miss you. 
oh wait a minute you're not you're not even talking to me <laughs> you're talking to each other what's that all about <laughs> Um, sorry, there's some folks talking on the Instagram. Um, hi, Bonnie. Nice to see you. Bonnie actually gave me a wee call uh, the other night, didn't you, Bonnie? And we kind of went over some of your history in Greenock um, and some of the things that Bonnie had been told, which wasn't um, probably as accurate as it could be. Um, hi, Patty. Patty is doing some uh, great stuff with um with uh, us at the moment so we're going to try and get as much uh of your ancestry together as we possibly can um hi crystal nice to see you as well so now we've got quite a few folks on both facebook and instagram i thought i would also let you know um kind of what um or what I would recommend you all do if you're looking at doing your ancestry. A lot of people, like I said, they'll use things like ancestry and they tend to kind of go back. So I get a lot of people who'll say to me, oh, I know I'm related to, I don't know, I'm just going to put it out there, William Wallace, right? <laughs> or Robert the Bruce. No. Um, and unless you can verify it, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take it. Okay, it's just as simple as it is. Unless I can verify it, I'm not gonna take it. Everything that I do, I verify. So, um, hi Joyce, nice to see you, Joyce. We're just talking about um, your ancestry and things here. Um, so, what I always recommend people do is go from yourself back. Don't try and go back forward it doesn't work always go from yourself back it seems like a kind of basic thing that i'm saying but sometimes you don't think that because you've been told things down the line never ever 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 take um what you've been told as fact ever 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 i mean even the way i like to describe it is a lot of people will remember things that they're parents or grandparents or great grandparents will tell them and sometimes the stories get more fantastic as time goes on but also things can also be misheard or misunderstood or misinterpreted so i always like to um try and do that myself and add the, as much anecdotal things on the side if i can if i can verify it but I'm one for facts. So unless you can 100% verify that you are in fact a descendant of Robert the Bruce, um, uh, I'm not taking it. Although, I mean, there is a chance, there is quite a high chance um, because we are technically all related somehow, but <laughs> um, unless you can verify it, no. Uh, let me just quickly see. We've now got um, Axel. Bonjour, Axel. Axel used to work for us. Um, she was our wee intern in 2018, and we love you so much. Much love to you over in Paris, and um, we miss you so much. Um, you meant a lot to us and to my mum. Axel stayed with my mother uh, <laughs> for, for the duration. She's become another daughter to my dad. Um, so love you lots, Excel, um, and I uh, hope you're all good. I'm just going to read some of the other stuff here. So I've got Tiffany Ray. Nice to see you, Tiffany. Uh, we've got Jean, another guest of ours. Jean, hello from Canada. I did not get any research done in my family whilst in Scotland last summer. Too much fun touring around. Yeah, that's it. Um, and Morag, um, love you, Morag. Uh, has just said love researching but Scotland's people is so expensive so yeah so I'll come into that in a wee moment um after I've debunked everything else I'll try to go through the kind of steps um and, and kind of little bits of advice that I can give you um to try and make it as cost effective as possible um and there are wee ways that you can do that um one thing you can do is like i said write as much that you know yourself down that you can actually verify it could be that you've got some of the records yourself in your own possession or someone in your family who's still with us still does 
So that could be uh, birth certificates, marriage certificates, death certificates, those things in particular, um, because then you can then try to look at things like census records to verify somebody's location, it, things like that. Um, so it's quite useful. It's also worth bearing in mind um, spellings of names and things can often be confused um, or misspelled as time has gone on. Um, so just as a wee, a wee note, so my, uh, my mother, her maiden name is Ramsey, R-A-M-S-A-Y. The family then, uh, my great great grandfather, his, I think it was three of his older brothers. So one emigrated to Canada and the other two emigrated to the United States. Um, and some of them have actually changed the spelling of the name to EY. So it's really frustrating for me. So when I'm going through like ancestry and things, I'm like, ah, spelt the name wrong. <laughs> it was it was EY. Um, it was AY, sorry, not EY. And the same very, there's lots of names like that. Um, one of the things is about Mac. So a lot of people have MAC or MC, and then people think that that's because one is Irish and one is Scottish. Not true necessarily. Um, it's usually to do with um, gravestones. So if you had, you used to pay by the letter on a gravestone, so everybody knows what MC stands for. It stands for son of Mac, McDonald, for example. Um, so they would sometimes just put MC. And then um, as time went on, sometimes people just misspelt it and then they just had that as their name. So it doesn't necessarily mean that that comes from Ireland at all. Um, in fact, they'll have the same name, the same word. So it, why in Ireland would you just take out an A? Like it doesn't make any sense um, otherwise. So just in case that's something that you've heard, um, it's not necessarily the case. Um, I know many McDonald's, for example, MC, MAC, McGregor as well, MC, MAC. So it doesn't um, necessarily mean that one is Scottish and one is Irish, just as a wee FYI. There are plenty of Irish names, um, names like, uh, uh, we've got Burn, we've got, I've got Irish, anyone in the west coast of Scotland practically has Irish in them. So I have like O'Brien, so my great, great granny was an O'Brien. I've got McStrivick, which is Irish. Um, I've got a uh, Cannon, unfortunately, which is Irish. I've got lots of Irish surnames. So um, yeah, that's just a wee FYI side note. Um, I've also got Duffy, Duffy. I'm a Duffy as well. My great granny was a Duffy. Um, so I've got plenty of Irish in me. Um, let me just go through some of the questions here. I did find out that my family name, Kirkwood from Dunbarney Parish is a sept of Stirling, which then was of McGregor. Okay, so we'll go into a wee bit of kind of clan names uh, shortly. I've got Jamie, hi Jamie, son of Dougal. <clears throat> you are correct, MacDougal, the MacDougals. Hi Amanda. So we've got some folks coming in just now onto um, Facebook a wee bit late. So um, what I would do, okay, so there's a website, I mentioned it briefly, Morag um, mentioned she finds it quite expensive. It's called Scotland's People and it's just scotlandspeople.com, I think. Hold on, I should know that. Um, and, and actually, guys, I've got this note, says so scotlandspeople.gov.uk, and I've actually got my account. Let me just go into it. Um, so if anyone wants any quick questions, I already have my credits, so I can answer very brief or give you a kind of, you know, whoever's first, I might be able to find somebody for you. So uh, there you go. Um, so, yeah, Scotland's People is our main um, record site. So uh, if you have uh, any 
births, deaths, marriages, um, census records. Um, let's just go for uh, one of mine. And just I'm just going to put in Margaret Ramsey. And she was from 1880 to 1920. So let's go on. So it kind of comes up usually if it's after the 1850s, usually you'll find it in this sort of setup. So you've got births, deaths, marriages. Then you've got the church registers, which are specific to maybe Catholics. Um, so you've got Catholic registers, uh, marriages, baptisms, and burials. You've then got your census returns. Um, you've also got valuation rolls, uh, sometimes legal records, uh, which are like wills and testaments. And then you've got your poor relief and migration records. So that's usually, that's the good stuff. So if you're after 1850s, you are um, starting to find these things much easier. Before that, it starts becoming a little bit more difficult. Um, but I'm always up for a good challenge. Hi, Agav. Hi, Daniel. Do you know much about the Murray clan name? So what do you use to research beyond the census records? Um, I don't quite know what you mean there, um, Agav. Is that... Are you just meaning, you know, if to find out where somebody was living? Because obviously that's where things become a little bit more tricky. Um, the census records, obviously, you've got your census from, I think it's 1841. Um, and even then it's a little bit hairy fairy. Um, what I tend to do is I'm, I like to super sleuth. So I like to like find as much information from a specific place as I possibly can, but it's not always that easy. It's, in fact, it's, it's very rarely that easy. Um, but you can do things. So I often go to the archives. So each parish usually has an archive uh, center that you can go and visit and try and find anything more specific, um, newspaper, uh, material. I was mentioning that before. Ship manifests. Um, sometimes you have to go to uh, London for these things, guys. Sometimes you have to go to England for these things. Um, it's not always that easy. Um, it all depends on the specific question um, and what you're actually looking for. Um, let me just see. Raph, thank you for putting that in. That is, in fact, um, over on our um, Facebook chat, we've got um, someone's just posted in the Scotland's People uh, information. Now, just quickly to let you know how that actually works. Um, so, uh, Morag was right. What you do is you put in um, so many credits. So, when you're looking at a specific um, record, for example, it could be a birth record. Usually it costs so many credits to view it. You don't even know if it's right or not. So I'm just looking here. I'm just going to turn this around here for our Instagrammers. You can see there, that's my site and that's my login. Um, and it says there, view image is going to be six credits. Guys, um, I will post a screenshot just now for you in the um, slash because it won't let me share the screen but there we go so what that means is that you have to pay and it's like whatever so if i'm gonna go and get more uh, credits um let me just see it can be quite it can get quite dear um i usually probably spend mm, about <sighs> couple of hundred pounds maybe uh, a month on it um, so it does get quite expensive um, but you really need it if you don't do it you're not going to verify it at all um, what I would say is um, 
we are uh, there is a way around that really and that is by going on to let me just see if I've got it here give me a wee minute so what you can do is go to Edinburgh itself um, so you could go to um, the records um, center over in Edinburgh and it sits right you can actually see it it's right um across from the Balmoral Hotel if any if you don't know where it is it's just right across from uh yeah the Balmoral it was like that which which hotel <laughs> um I've got it actually in our um Facebook I might share it I did a wee live video one day when I was walking over to it um for a laugh and would have been I don't know, January or something, maybe December. Um, I went and did some work. So you pay for a seat there. So you pay like £15 usually, and that gets you your seat for the day. And then while you're there, you don't have to pay to look at a record, but you then have to pay if you want to store it. So if you want to save it, that's when you pay. But it means that if you really have a lot to get through or you want to get through as much as you possibly can without having to spend and spend and spend and spend and spend it's actually a really good um tool basically so one wee minute i'm just going to check did you see my knives there <laughs> i'm just going to quickly move this just make sure i've got enough charge for a while sorry guys um has anyone got any questions about that? Because that's quite a lot of information. I don't want to ramble on too much. So if you've got any specific questions for me, um, I can help. Um, Amanda just quickly asked, the best question of the night is, what are you drinking? I am drinking a gin and diet tonic because I'm on a diet. <laughs> so I'm only giving myself one of these, but um, there you go. So what have you got for me? What questions have we got? Ed, that was a good one. Could you be a bit more specific? Is that is does that answer your question? Did you really was it more to do with, you know, if you can't find them on a census because it's too early, is it how to find if they were in a particular area? Or there's there's nothing really you can do about that other than figuring out where they were born. If you have that kind of information you then can take it um, a wee bit further by going to the archive centre. So I know you're up, I think you're up in Invergordon, am I right? Um, if you're up in Invergordon, you can go to your local, um, that's if it's in Invergordon you're looking at. Uh, let's see, um, we've got Bonnie here. Bonnie's got a good question. Would Greenock be the port used for someone from Glasgow? immigrating to Canada after 1923. I have my grand's immigration record from 1923, but my great grandmother immigrated later. Um, not sure if it was in the early 30s. So that is a very good question. And most likely it would have been there. You wouldn't really have left from uh, Glasgow at all uh, because you, I mean, Bonnie, you've been here before. Where Greenock sits is the tail of the bank. It's called the tail of the bank on the Clyde. So um, they have to physically dredge the Clyde all the way up towards Glasgow so that ships and other boats can go through. But if you go to somewhere like Dumbarton, you can see in, in Clyde Bank, when the tide is completely out, it almost looks like you can walk across the river from one side to the other so they can only bring ships down up and down at certain times of the day because you just couldn't do it otherwise so for that reason where Greenock is the next town it used to be called Newark back in the day back back way 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 back in the day um, before Glasgow was industrialized um, and then the town next to us here in Greenock is now called Port Glasgow and it's called Port Glasgow because before that, it was the Port of Glasgow. Before they started dredging the Clyde, that was the Port of Glasgow. Um, 
So um, there's a pier in Greenock where the cruise liner still come in today anyway. So we FYI, it's called the Princess Pier, or it used to be called the Princess Pier anyway. It's now Clydeport. Um, but if you go there, that's where most of the ships used to leave from. So part of the uh, Greenock Town Trail and part of the, the Clyde Coastal Path is to show you about the emigration of peoples leaving from Scotland. Um, Greenock is quite unique as an, an in the fact that it's one of the only deep ocean ports in Scotland, which is why it's favoured. That's the only reason really why the cruise liners in so many, um, in su such big numbers really come in here and why um, the River Clyde was the main sort of shipbuilding, um, it was the shipbuilding capital, if you like, of Great Britain at one point, if not the empire. Um, and that's because, um, it's quite sheltered, but also Greenock is, is deep ocean, so you can get the ship right up against the side. Um, you don't have to get a wee tender boat that takes you backwards and forwards, so it's really important. Um, and um, yeah, so all the big like big cruise liners like the QE2 and things like that, they were made in Clyde Bank, and obviously a lot of people in Clyde Bank, and I know lots of people in Govan and places like that are gonna get annoyed with me because I'm kind of going on about you know, not getting ships further up the Clyde. Obviously you could, but um, you had a, most of them were finished in Greenock in our big dry docks. We still have them. In fact, I saw the Waverley was somewhere. I think the Waverley is back. I, I mean, I've not been down, obviously we've been stuck inside, but I was under the impression the Waverley, which is the um, last ocean going paddle steamer, in the world and she goes up and down all over the country and she often sits in Greenock because of its um the nature of it being a main port so to, uh, it's a very long-winded answer to your question there Bonnie but yes it is very likely um one other thing that I mentioned to Bonnie the other night was that in Greenock strangely enough um, it used to have the largest um, and most important um, uh, customs um, office in Scotland, um, and we call it we call it the Customs House. Um, and it was built in the eighteen twenties, um, and it's been there ever since. Um, however, it stopped its life as a customs house. Gosh, it must, like, it must have been about six or seven, maybe more, maybe eight years ago now. Um, and they had this wonderful exhibition while it was still a customs house inside that you could go around and they had all sorts of things that they had confiscated from ships for the past 200 years, like um, pirates and smugglers and things like that. It was really great. Um, and then when they stopped being a customs building, they just gave all the stuff away. Um, even worse is we haven't had a dedicated archives in Inverclyde. So Inverclyde is the area that, that Greenock is part of um, since two, only since 2014. So a lot of this information we're still trying to get a hold of. So it is very much a work in progress. So hopefully, you never know, you might be able to find somebody on a ship somewhere or a ship manifest, but they don't always have that. You might have to go to Liverpool or elsewhere just to get that information. Um, two seconds, I'll just quickly see here on Insta. Uh, a just says, I sorry, went back as far as the census would take me, but can't find out any information from before the records began. My research is all Gerloch. Baracro. Oh, I love it there. I was there this time last year. Um, a sea kayaking. It was amazing. It's one of my favorite places. Um, yeah, I would probably check Inverness because um, a lot of play, a lot of the stuff was just taken there. Um, so you never know. I might. You might just send me a wee PM or something. I'll see what I can find. Um, let's see. So we've got um, some more questions. <laughs> so I've got Morag again. Um, Scotland people go to divorces. Yeah, 
Um, I've been trying to find a great uncle's divorce in 1918. He went to Peru and married a Peruvian girl and I have a feeling he never got divorced, but I can't find out for sure. Darn it. <laughs> That's not, I might be I, like, just send me that Morag. I'll see what I can find. Um, we've got Shelley says, would the ports used in 1704 be the same or would they travel farther to immigrate? Um, well, not necessarily. Um, for immigration purposes, um, a lot of them still left from here, where I am right now, um, in Greenock. Um, that's why the town grew, um, because of its nature of being a major port city. So a lot of ships coming in and out all of the time. In fact, um, Captain James Kidd, although like guys I know, like please don't, you know, anyone from Dundee is probably going to um, give me hell. But uh, Captain Kidd, when he was on the gallows, he famously said he was of Greenock. We now think that that was actually Carnock and he mis they misunderstood him and his accent. Um, but there is a very high likely that he did live in Greenock, at least for a short time, um, because of its nature being a, a shipping town. Um, and they believe he lived on a place called Duff Street in Greenock, which is a tiny little street. And I'm that immature that um, after the pub, going to the Jimmy Watt pub in Greenock, I would walk to Duff Street and say to my pals, I'm up the Duff. <laughs> Which just basically means I'm pregnant. Um, <laughs> I just thought that was so funny. Um, clearly not, guys. Um, so let's go to Joyce's question. Hi, Barbie girl. Um, hi, Catriona singing. Um, oh, sorry, here. My ancestors were Scots-Irish, first migrated to Northern Ireland, then to the US. Do you know the time period when the majority of of the migration to Ireland occurred. So uh, this is a good one. Um, Ireland, look, Ireland and Scotland are very close to one another. Really important to note that, very close. So there's always been um, migration going backwards and forwards between us. Now, um, what a lot of people refer to themselves when they say that they're Scots-Irish and things like that is because of, primarily because of the uh, plantations in Ireland in the uh, 17th century. So that's always important to note. Um, so a lot of people went over, um, usually impoverished Presbyterians, or what we would associate or define as a Presbyterian, um, were planted in Ireland under the orders of James VI of Scotland, who was by that point James I of England. And it was a way to try and suppress Catholics. <laughs> there's, there's no other way to say it. Um, and it was known as the Plantation of Ireland. So that's why there's... Um, a lots of links and between Scotland and Ireland and their Kirk, the Church of Ireland is very similar to the Church of Scotland, for example. Um, people have the same names um, and they still have that affinity to Scotland, um, like the, the Protestant side of Scotland, at least. Um, so that's important um, to note. So that happened, like I said, in the um, 17th century Joyce um, and then like my in the eight well this would have been the 19th century already I had some of my ancestors from Ayrshire were just hopping over and having babies in Ireland and coming back because they were working so depending on what they were doing they might have gone over so it's um it's not always as easy to say what it would have been um without knowing all the facts. But generally speaking, that is when that would have all happened. And uh, yeah, so that's that. Um, hi guys, thanks for joining in to my ancestry and genealogy chat. Um, so we've got John, hi John. Um, 
Signing in from Michigan in the USA, my great grandparents, Robert Mackay, was from Greenock, working for the Glasgow and South Western RR. He died in 1902 in an accident while working in the signal department. His father was John Mackay. Let's have a wee look. Um, sorry, my eyesight is horrendous. Okay. Um, and mother was Mary Henderson. My great grandmother Mary was from Cradle Dyke. Her mother was a Gib, okay. Um, and that's the thumbnail of the information I have. I know that most of the Mackay clan is up in the north east. It's actually the northeast of Scotland there. Um, are there any Mackay historical societies I might contact? A bit of trivia, my grandfather David Main Mackay was on standby passage on the Titanic. Fortunately, fortunately, he sought another passage on a Canadian Pacific ship to Montreal in 1912. Fascinating, isn't it? Just looking at people's um, family stories, I just love it. Um, so there is absolutely a, a Mackay uh, clan society and I'll, I'll see if I can find them and, and post it for you. Um, and you can then have a wee join there. Um, my papa, I mentioned this the other night, my papa, although not through blood, he was my grandmother's second husband. Um, she loved the wedding cake, as we all say. Um, <laughs> but he was my papa and he um, he was a Mackay from Aberdeen. So uh, definitely. And I know some of the places that you're talking about uh, in Greenock here. Um, I don't, do I know any local Mackays? Leave that with me. You know, if you've got any Greenock stuff specifically, um, send it to me because I, I do a lot of um, genealogy work and ancestry work and archival work as well. And like I said, we're still trying to work and piece a lot of this information together. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's always good fun. Let's just see. You're welcome, Shelley, Sharon. Lovely to see you, Sharon Bloom, and her um, lovely husband, other another Grenokians, as we call ourselves. Um, no worries, Donna, you do what you have to do. Uh, we've got Ashman, not Scottish at all, just fell in love with the Highlands when I visited a few years ago. Wonderful. It is a special, special place. And Fiona, <laughs> oh, I'm late. I'll have to look back. Absolutely. But if you have any questions, Fiona, I'm still here. I can help you out. They lived on Glebe Road. Oh, Glebe Road. Let me just have a little look at that. Because the Glebe, I want to buy it, guys. It's actually for sale in Greenock. Um, I'm just trying to find, I can only see a Glebe Road in Inverkip, which is two minutes down the road from here. Um, but I can, must be the Glebe Sugar House. Hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to have to look more into that, John. Um, but right there's the old, because Greenock is famous for its sugar, you see. So we had all the sugar factories and sugar houses here. Um, and one of them is called the Glebe. Um, and it's this amazing, beautiful red brick um, industrial masterpiece uh, that sits right next to the Princess Pier, right next to the Clyde Port I was talking about. Um, it used to be across from my unit when we had our unit in Greenock there um, and it's for sale, it's still for sale, it's in a terrible state, but I want it, I want it. Um, so anyway, John, well, I'll have to find that for you when I get a chance. Um, my grandfather's still with us and he's he always knows a lot of these things. So if there's old streets and things that are no longer there, he's quite good at finding it for me. So here we've got Alan Bell, good Scottish name there, Bell. You are aligned with the um, Macmillan clan. I don't know if you know that, Alan. 
your chief lives just down the road from us here um, at uh, Finliston House. George, he's a lovely old guy. Um, and he's got a wee clan centre, which we sometimes go into. But anyway, let's just quickly read this. My great, great, great grandfather, John Bell Sr., was born in Ireland and immigrated to Kirkintilloch and married a local lass named Elizabeth Watson and made a family in Kilsyth, where my great, great grandfather, John Bell Jr., was born. I know from family records that John Bell Sr.'s father was also named John Bell. This is my life, guys. Uh, everybody's got this stuff, right? Um, I know from family records that John Bell Sr.'s father was also named John Bell and was married to Agnes Rennie, who was not alive when her son, John Bell Sr., was married. Anyway, would it be worthwhile to join Scotland's people to find out exactly what town, county in Ireland my great, great, great grandfather John Sr. was born. This is the big mystery in the family. I live in the USA. Thanks. Okay, that is a really good question, Alan. Um, it's not going to work. Scotland's people is not going to work for that. Um, I would say what I would do is try to verify and make sure that John Bell that, um, that your great, great, great grandfather was in fact born in Ireland. Um, I say this really because I've had my own. So my, um, as I said, my great, great granny was born Helen O'Brien. And we were always told that she was born just when her um, parents migrated to Scotland. Uh, from Ireland. Um, so I was doing this thinking, okay, both of her parents were born in Ireland. Well, they weren't. Her mother was born in Scotland, down in Ayrshire, as was her father was born in Stirling. Where did that come from? <laughs> he was born in Stirling. So I found on the actual census, it says where you're from, where you're born. And if you had a really strong, if he emigrated to Scotland as an, as an adult, I would assume that he would have some pretty obvious Irish accent but no he said he was from Stirling when I went back I found that <coughs> excuse me that his father was the one born in Ireland so her grandfather was the Irish one not her father so that's why I'm trying to say what I'm trying to say there John go to the census records um around about the time you mentioned was it Kirk and Tullach, um if you go then, you should be able to find him, okay, um, or Kilsyth. And if you do that, or sometimes it's mentioned on the, or usually actually with the t uh, dates that you're talking about, you might be lucky to find it on the um, marriage certificate. Usually it says, if it says Ireland, um, and then you could possibly find that on the census records. But unfortunately, the census records, it doesn't say exactly. So I'll give you an example. So Greenock census in my house. I would not go down from where I was born. So my census record would say born Greenock. Nope. Born um, outside. And then it would just say South Africa. OK, so that's how it would say it. And it would say the same for Ireland. England, the very, uh, in fact, I've never seen a census record where they actually say where in Ireland or where in England anyone was actually from other than England or Ireland, etc., or Italy, stuff like that. Uh, the Bruins tingle. Uh, John, you said behind the football stadium, you might be thinking about Gibb, G-I-B-B-S, Gibbs Hill. Um, that's the one that's just behind the football stadium there. Gibbs Hill is not far. Um, it kind of sounds a bit like leave. I don't know. Maybe it just kind of got mis um, translated, lost in translation, maybe. Um, so next we've got uh, our tree stuck with Duncan Cameron, 1786 to 1880. And Janet McPhee, um, who left 
small property at Kyle's Morar, 1855 for Australia Catholic. A name like McPhee, that sounds like a, a Barra folk uh, there. Um, and being Catholic, I would assume that they were also from Barra because Barra or South Uist were um, Catholic islands as well. Look, 1786. So what what are you trying to find? Are you trying to find his parents or he's the last person you know or you can't find any information on him? Because I'm going to quickly check this out. Right, guys, let's do some actual work. Right, so we've only got a few moments left. So let's just quickly do this, Duncan Cameron. I've got Camerons too. Quite a lot of Camerons. Camerons and um, I've got McPhee's. No, McPhee's. No, McPhee's. Sorry. I've got uh, McNeil's. Sorry, McNeil's. That's better. McPhee is used. Sorry, wrong name. <laughs> Wrong place. Right. So what did you say? 18 what? Sorry, 1786. To 1880. Now, bear in mind. So we do have some Catholic registers for this as you would imagine so he married a Janet McPhee so let's just go and see the Catholic click bands and marriages oh god could you imagine there's so, so <laughs> there's so many <laughs> Let's go to old parish registers, right? So let's see marriages. So let's go to Roman Catholics. Update results. So what did you say it was? It was Janet. No. Let's see. So no, I can't see. I'm probably going to have to go through that. 27 Clay Broad. Right. The, the questions are coming in now. <laughs> I'm going to, do you know, Marge, what you're going to have to do is message me, um, directly i'm probably gonna have to spend a bit more time on that one um because i've got quite a lot of duncan camerons so you'd need to tell me exactly what you're trying to find out if you know their marriage if you don't know their marriage if you know anything that you you know at all um is going to help um what about hughes and mcguggan um ah there jackie hughes <laughs> you've got a hughes just below you there jen um let's quickly see so we've got mcleod i love that mcleod i'm mcleod of the clan mcleod anyway it's like the thing you say with highlander reference but anyway sorry it's a really bad joke um dragonfly hi um so let's just see managed to get back to the 1880s Oh, sorry, 1800s on my dad's side with McLeod of McLeod and McSween married into Mackenzie's. Also, there too. Shalom Visitor Centre and Harris helped me out, but I figuring it out was somewhat confusing. Yeah, Jackie, you just annoy me with it. Absolutely. Um, I can probably get back a wee bit further just depending on what you have especially if the people were kind of in the same area at the same time so you're right you could get mcleods 
you must know i mean if if you've got them in harris that might work deb i'm talking about ancestry and deb is my lovely um lady originally from canada now living in new york and we are ramses and we've been doing the taylors uh taylor history with that and ramsey um so yeah good stuff uh let's just quickly look can Lochiel, maybe yeah okay there's a there's another top tip that i can give you for using scotland's people um what i would suggest you do is when you search it you don't always have to search it with the name i told you before there's so many misspellings and things so you can do something called a fuzzy a fuzzy name search so it just picks up things that are similar so it might like let's just use ramsey it might be ramsey a y or mcdonald but mc and mac so it gives you more options than if you were putting in the specifics of what you think so um we've got uh where was that now um march now you've got another nice scottish name there mitchell but his parents through to by donald and isabella Ken Lockheel. So there's no K in the Gaelic alphabet. So that looks to me you'd have that quite easily with a CH. Ken Lockheel, not Lockheel. Um, but it could be spelled like that somewhere. I have one which was the most bizarre thing. It was misspelled, and this is back oh, like a 200, like I've got so far back actually. Um, and they had spelt a name. The, the guy was called Mc, um, McNeish, I think, his first name. It was like a really weird first name. But they've wrote in it, like, or wrote in it. <laughs> they, read, they wrote it really strange. Um, just completely killed it. Um, so I had to find it. But it was McLeish. And so whoever it was, was not very good with Scottish who wrote that name down on a piece of paper back in the day. And this is before the, um, you know, it was compulsory to have records. Um, so there we go. Let's just quickly see. The grandmother is a Mitchell. Bonsoir, Jean-Philippe. Um, Jennifer, You've just said, not sure how your maternal grandfather's name was actually spelled. So yeah, just I would just say use the fuzzy name uh, thing and that would be great. So that's pretty much it for tonight. I didn't want to bore you too much. As you can see, we got quite a lot of information there. Um, thanks to everybody for taking part. Um, if there's any specific questions um, about anything i've kind of spoken about i've tried to be as broad um as possible obviously each person has different challenges as we could see there trying to find out this person or that person or you know without census information what can you do um so that's really what i do um i don the white gloves and i go places and i touch old books and old um, documents and i absolutely cherish it um so deb who's here um i've been touching i was touching the letter that her great 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 grandfather wrote um out um for uh work that he wanted to be done on extending his house it was just fascinating to see his beautiful it was one of the most beautiful pieces of writing just gorgeous cursive and this was in the 1790s um so it was just absolutely superb so you know if you're looking for any assistance as well you know just a wee shout out for me i do this as a job i do an hourly rate but i do prefer um to work so that you guys know exactly how much you're going to spend i don't want you just to give me your stuff and then you know i, I run away with it um, I would much rather you had an idea 
using your own research, whatever you've got, speaking to friends and family, whatever you need to do. And then that gives me a good ballpark figure. I can come back and give you a good quote. Um, and uh, yeah, that's usually how I work. So I'm just going to say goodbye to you Instagrammers. Thank you. Um, and if you want any help with your family research, let me know. Um, Deb, we've done quite a lot. I've got a wee booklet and lots to talk about moving forward. So take care. Love you lots. Mwah. So there we go. So that's um, Deb. Um, she's my she's my uh, customer um, for the Ramses. Um, she's actually coming with me. Hopefully, if everything's well in September, and we're going to have a nice day out in our growth because that's where her family spent quite a few generations which is just awesome and she has a really significant um family member uh who was one of uh well a napoleonic war hero um and there's no information about him anywhere so i'm trying to do as much as i can to collect information so hopefully there'll be something when you go to our growth in this guy's honor um, because without him, you know, it might have been totally different. He jumped in, dived into the water, um, and retrieved um, dispatches meant for Napoleon. Anyway, so he was uh, given a really important honor. So I, I mean, it's an honor for me to research all your family history. It's an honor for me to be part of that and to help you with your um, your research. So if it's something that you want me to help you with i will help you um and uh, like i said if you want me on a more um professional capacity if you really want me to sit and dig in i can spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours um <laughs> i can do that all for you um so do get in touch um and i can do that for you um and that includes um you know if you can't necessarily get to scotland i also do go around the, where your ancestors from, take some pictures, send you, maybe find some gravestones, things like that. I love doing that. And if I can, I collate everything into a wee book, all my research, and then any um, documentation I will send on to you as well, anything that I have managed to get my hands on. So again, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, private messages if you have anything you really need um, help with and um, I will see you tomorrow night. So take care guys. Love you lots. <laughs>